friends so welcome to the end in the video in this video we'll solve some theory questions of business statics for mcom students of semester one so this questions are from 2024 january paper so let's see the first question is normal approximation of binomial distribution is an effective tool to compute the probability of success in a binomial distribution we have to justify this statement considering the nature and characteristics of binomial distribution binomial distribution models the number of successes in a fixed number of independent trials the experiment with two possible outcomes success or failure and it is defined by two parameters that is n the number of trials and p the probability of success on each trial now the mean and the variance. Mean is the expected value of binomial distribution that is mu is equals to np and the variance is standard deviation square is equals to np 1 minus p. Now uh, looking into the conditions for normal approximation, the very first is large sample size. The normal approximation becomes more accurate as the sample size n increases. A common rule of thumb is that both np and n minus and n 1 minus p should be greater than 5 or 10 in some other cases. Central limit theory, according to central limit theory, uh, as the number of trials increases, the distribution of the sample proportion approaches a normal distribution regardless of the shape of the original distribution. So now looking to the some justification for using normal approximation, it's simple to calculate and directly from the binomial formula, especially when we have large n, the normal approximation approximation provides a simple way to calculate probabilities using standard normal uh, distribution tables or softwares. Continuity correction. When we are using normal approximation, a continuity cor correction adding or subtracting 0.5 is often applied to account for a discrete nature of the binomial distribution. Effective probability estimation. The normal approximation allows for effective estimation of probabilities over a range of values rather than just specific outcomes which can particularly useful in scenario involving large data set or when performing statistical inf um, inferences. So we can conclude that normal approximation of binomial distribution is an effective tool for calculating probabilities because of its simplicity and accuracy under appropriate conditions. Uh, so let's see in this question first we'll uh, define what is binomial distribution, its characteristics and conditions for normal appro approximation that is large sample size and central limit theorem and justification for using normal appro uh, approximation that is uh, because of its simplicity, continuity correction and effective probability estimation. Moving to the next question that is explain the unbiasedness criteria of a good estimator. Suppose that you have two biased estimator of the same population parameter. Estimator A has a bias equal to 1 where n is the sample size used. Estimator B has a bias equal to 0 0.01. Under what conditions is estimator A better than B? Here we can clearly see that estimator uh, A, that estimator B have less a uh, bias as compared to A. But we have to uh, look for the conditions in which estimator A is better than B. So uh, the very first is unbiased criteria for a good estimator. So in statics, an estimator is a rule or formula used to estimate an un unknown population parameter based on sample data. One important proper, uh, property of a good estimator is unbiasedness. An estimator for a parameter is said to be unbiased if the expected value mean of an estimator equals to the true value of the parameter being estimated. So an estimator is considered better than another if it has a smaller bias or lower variance or both. In practice, other factors such as consistency and efficiency are also considered when evaluating the estimators. Now, there is a comparison between A and B given two biased estimator with the same population parameter. We have estimator A bias equals to 1, B bias equals to 0 0.01. The conditions under which estimator A can be a better estimator than B. So, we have to estimator A to be considered better than estimator B despite having a large bias, we need to look at the additional criteria beyond just bias. So the very first is variance consideration. If estimator A has significantly lower variance compared to estimator B, it might be preferable in certain context. For example, if the variance are such that the mean squared error of estimator A is lower than estimator B, then estimator A is might be considered better than estimator B. Same when the sample size impact. If the sample size n increases 
and estimators a by remains constant while its variance decreases significantly it might become more favorable conversely if estimators b bias remain constant but it variance increases with sample size then this also means that a is more appealing cost of bias versus cost of variance in some situation the cost associated with bias might be less critical than cost associated with variance or uncertainty stakeholders are more concerned about consistency that is low variance rather than exactness that is low bias then estimator a could be preferred so in conclusion we can say while unbiasedness is a desirable property for an estimator but it is not only one criteria for evaluate, evaluating their quality an estimator with a large bias can still be a better than one with smaller bias if it has significantly lower variance or if have uh, specific contextual favors factors favor it uses that's why here to determine if estimator a is better than b one must consider both bias and variance as well as specific context in which estimators are being applied so in this question first we'll have to uh, explain the unbiased criteria of a good estimator then there will be a comparison between estimator a and b then the conditions under which estimator a is better than b uh, and these conditions could be variance consideration sample size impact cost of bias versus the cost of variance moving to the next question that is distinguish between parameter and parametric and non parametric test and discuss the conditions when sign test can be applied so uh, using a tabular form so a uh, parametric test we assumes that the data follows a specific distribution typically a normal distribution they also assume ho homogeneity of variance that the data is measured on an interval or ratio scale but in non parametric test this does not assume any specific distribution of the data and they are often used when the data does not meet the assumptions required by the para parametric test uh, some examples of parametric test are t test anova pearson uh, pearson correlation efficient for non uh, parametric test it's u test sign test or rank test so the advantages of parametric is it is more powerful than parametric test non parametric test when assumptions are met and meaning they have a higher probability of correctly rejecting a false null hypothesis and they provide estimates of parameters like mean and allow for a more detailed statistical uh, inferences but in non parametric uh, test these are flexible as they can be used with ordinal data or non normally distributed interval data and useful for small sample sizes or when the data contains outliers uh, the disadvantage for parametric is if the assumptions of the normality and homogeneity of variance are violated the result can be misleading and here in non metric test generally less powerful than pa uh, parametric test when the assumptions of the parametric test are satisfied now uh, the parametric tests are not suitable for small sizes unless the population distribution is known to be normal in non parametric they do not provide estimations of population parametric like means but rather focus on ranks or medians now there was a second part for this question discuss the condition when sign test can be applied so moving to this the conditions when the sign test can be applied are the type of data the data should be least uh, ordinal is often used with interval or ratio data but can also be applied or ordinal data since it only consider the direction of differences second is paired uh, observation the sign test is typically used for paired data when you have a two related samples that is pre test or post test measurement of the same subject independence the pair of observation must be independent to each other this means that the outcome of one pair should not influence the other pair null hypothesis Null hypothesis generally states that the median difference between the paired observation is zero. Handling zero differences, if there are pairs with zero difference, these pair can either be excluded from analysis or handled according to specific study protocols. Sample size, while there is no strict minimum sample size for the sign test, it is typically more reliable with larger samples. However, it can still be conducted with small samples as long as the conditions are met. uh so we have covered this uh question